In today's video, we will understand different model representation and their interpretability. We will see what do we mean by underfitting, overfitting and bias variance trade-offs. So let us understand by model representation and their interpretability. We will here more precisely discuss supervised learning model which are basically processing labeled input data to learn or to find out the target function which best can determine the target variable from a given set of input variables. Key consideration of these algorithms is the generalization. Generalization in machine learning refers to how well the concepts are learned by machine learning model applied to a specific example, not seen by the model when it was learning. So here we are measuring the performance of a model, how good or how general concepts are learned by a particular model. Here input data is very limited for any application or an algorithm. Obviously if data is large or small, whether it, it must be of type limited. And type limited data must have some specific view and unknown data may be different from that given specific view. So the goal of machine learning model is to generalize a knowledge which is given or which is consumed for training data. But to any data of that problem domain comes in, it must allow itself to take or make the prediction of a future data which is not seen ever by a model in its previous history. So the fitness of a target function is a fit that refers to how well you approximate a given target function. Here we will discuss two different important concepts of something called as overfitting and underfitting, which are the two biggest cause of poor performance of a machine learning algorithm. Underfitting is basically referring to a model that it can neither try to relate or try to follow the training data nor it is generalizing the new data. So as a result, when the target function is very simple, it may not be able to capture the essence or the knowledge that is being represented by an underlying data. It may also result from an unavailability of sufficiently enough training data. So since we are discussing supervised learning, I will give an example of underfitting for regression and for classification. In a regression, we have data samples and we try to fit a model. Now as you can see in this example, the target function is neither learning or going to fit given data points correctly. Since it is not learning from anything from a given training data, it will neither generalize our new data. An example of underfitting for classification problem is being given by this second example. In this second example, if I want to categorize two different types of data, that means I want to find out class which includes all the samples of say circle type and all the samples of cross types. I will generally draw a line which is very bad, neither is giving a good separation of two different groups. So here, here trying to represent a non-linear data with a linear model is an example of underfitting. So what will be the result of this underfitting? Result of underfitting is that poor generalization of this training data and poor performance with the test data. So we will not win in either case. Neither uh, training data is generalized nor the performance of model will be good for the new data. So, in order to avoid these kind of underfitting model, we must use more data as training data as possible. So, reducing and second thing we can do is, we can reduce the features by effectively performing feature selection. Since there are no noise in features, we will have more clear feature data. What is an overfitting? And another issue of machine learning performance is an overfitting which refers to a model which aligns or which fits a training data too well. 
So overfitting happens when model try to learn in pre-detail, even noise which is present in training data, in an extent that it negatively impacts the performance of a model, which is being performed over a new data or upcoming data. It is basically resulting from trying a fit which is excessively complex model or which is close to a training data. Here, here we have no generalization or very less generalization as compared to a training data. An example of overfitting is a target function which is trying to make sure that all points that are given in a, a data set are correctly placed on a boundary of a given function. Say for example, this is our regression example and the our target function is trying to cover each and every point of a data set correctly. So this is an example of overfitting. Talking in terms of classification, we draw a fine line which is separates out two different groups clearly. Here we are not generalizing our model before fitting it. So the result of overfitting is that even though it gives a good performance with training data, you can see that training data is so well covered. No data, no training data set point is left which can be covered by a particular system. But because of this poor generalization which is given by overfitting, we have very poor performance with test data. So what we can do to avoid overfitting or kind of problem? We can use as many as samples in our training data. And we can also reduce the features by doing effective feature selection. Now, if we do not have an underfitting or an overfitting, how our good fit or balanced fit looks like. A balanced fit is a seed spot between underfitting and overfitting. Here our goal is to have a good bias and variance trade-off which is very difficult to achieve in practice. An example of balanced fit, say for example this is our training samples and we have a regression. We try to fit a good linear regression for a given regression model. So here as you can see, target function is more close to each data point as possible. In a classification problem also, as you can see, we are finding a two different major partitions which are more accurately partitioning that towards the left hand side of a given partition, we have majority of X crosses and towards the right of a given partition, we have majority of circles. So it is a balanced trade-off of something called as bias and variance. Let us look into detail what is this bias and variance trade-off. In supervised learning, we actually predict another value which is the predicted by learning model. It can be a label or it can be a real value. The actual difference between predicted value which is being predicted by a model and the actual value of that given data cycle is called as an error. Now this error, the difference in actual value and and predicted value is an error which can occur because of two reasons. That error can be due to bias or it can be due to variance. Now what is this bias and variance? Let us look into detail. An error in learning can be of two types. It can be because of bias or it can be because of variance. Bias is basically measuring how far our general models predictions are from the correct value. So the exact difference between an actual value and predicted value is nothing but a, an error which is produced because of bias. It basically arises simply by simplifying our assumptions or to finding or to making a model which is very simple as compared to a given data. So by simplifying an assumption made by a model to make our target function less difficult or less complex and easy to learn is a reason and error due to bias. So here we have parametric model, we have generally higher bias making easier than to understand. So we use as many as parameters as possible for a model. 
So any paramilitary border which is having high bias because of that they have avoided multiple parameters and they try they are easier to understand and easier to learn. These algorithms have very poor performance on data set which are very complex in nature. So if data set itself is very complex and we try to fit a simple model into it, we have an error due to bias. And these errors due to bias are the result of underfitting. So if your model is underfitting, we will have high bias in our system or model. Now what are the errors due to variance? A variance is showing how much a prediction for a given point varies between different realization of a model. Say for example, if I train a model with one training data set and predict some value of one more data and later on I will train same model with some different training data set and predict the same unknown data. What are the difference between two different predictions that are made by a model with two different trainings on it? So that value or change in those predicted values are errors due to variance. This error arises from difference in training data set that is used to train a model. So different random sampling training data sets are used to train the model. And ideally this difference should not be as significant. But in case of overfitting where we try to closely attach each training data, even a small difference in training data set will get magnified in our model. As you can see over the screen, there are three different examples. Our first figure shows an overfitting where we are trying to cover each and every training sample as possible. So this will result in high variance. Even a small change in data set or training value will give us a good or high change in the predicted value of a model. Second figure is an example of underfitting. Where we have a complex data set which is looking like a curve, but we are fitting very simple model like a linear line which will result in high biasness. That means the difference between predicted and actual value will be very different. And we have something called as good balance or balanced fit where we need to closely align our training data set nor we are generalizing too much but we are having in this case no bias and no variance. Problem in machine learning can be only arises in either of the cases when model is too simple and try to fail or interpret the knowledge inside data grossly. Or model A model is extremely complex and it magnifies even a small difference or negligible noise which is present inside training data set. So as you can see in the given diagram, when there is a high bias, we are having a data set and a model which is not clearly or colliding with our training data set, which results in underfitting. We have high variance, that is our third diagram, where we try to cover each and every sample very closely. So if the training data set even changes very slightly, will give an impact over the prediction made by a model, which is a result of overfitting. So what is the point between this high bias and high variance is a just right or good fit model which neither too closely aligns with our data points nor too generalizes our data points. It is just understood that if we try to reduce or increase the bias, our variance decreases and if we try to increase variance, bias decreases. Because if I keep on generalizing, if I generalize too much, it will result in underfitting. Hence, it will result in high bias. If I do not generalize and if I go too precise, it will result in overfitting. Hence, it will go to high variance. So, we have two different types of algorithms. We have something called as parametric algorithms, which are high bias and low variance algorithm and we have non-parametric algorithm which are having 
low bias and high variance algorithms. Let us understand this low bias and high variance trade off. As you can see, low bias and low variance data means blue dots are nothing but predicted value of an algorithm, and this brown dot is nothing but a actual value that should be get predicted. So if my algorithm is of no bias and no variance, our predicted values will be more closer to our actual value. If my algorithm is having low bias and high variance, we will have some of the predictions which are close to actual predictions, but most of the predictions will be not close to our actual value. If we have low variance and high bias in our system, predicted values will be far from an actual value of a given data sample. And if we have high bias and high variance, our data points are being far from actual values, neither they are always giving us the same value prediction for different different trainings. So our best solution is having a model with low bias and low variance. If we find out or if we try to plot our bias and variance over two dimensional plot, that is we are having error and model complexity, as we keep on increasing variance, it will decrease our biases. And if we increase our bias, it decreases our variance. So, they are having this kind of trade-offs. We must have an optimal model complexity where lowest bias and lowest variance as much as possible. We try to achieve those kind of parameters for our machine learning model. So we have to, we only not have to produce very complex model. If model is too complex, we will have less bias and high variance. If model is very simple, we will have more bias and less variance. But if we choose complexity of model in between, such a way that bias and variance are as less as possible. So that is all for today. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing off.